Happy Monday. I hope you had a lovely break and are ready to get started. We are going to have actually three notes videos and one independent practice today. Uh, the first one we're going to do is equations, which is lesson one for chapter eight. So please turn your books to page 589 if you're not already there. Important words that we need to understand are equation, expression, equal sign, solve, and solution. Uh, first, let's talk about equation. It's a mathematical sentence showing two expressions that are equal. An equation contains an equal sign. So this is important. So I have went ahead and showed you the answers to this. It's asking you to write the definition, again, of equation. Again, it's a mathematical sentence showing two expressions that are equal. An example could be a simple number sentence of 5 plus 8 equals 13, or it could be an algebraic equation in which the number 8 is replaced with the letter x, but this is also true that 5 plus x is equal to 13. In this case, x would be equal to 8. Now, an expression is a combination of numbers and operations in which, which also might include variables, but they don't include an equal sign. So an example of an expression could be 5 plus x minus 16, 5 plus 7 minus 16. So you notice in these two um, examples, there are no um, equal signs. So um, how are equations and expressions similar? They both can contain numbers and operations and sometimes variables. How are they different? An equation has an equal sign, but an expression does not. Okay, so I want you to answer this question for me. What is true about an equation? What is always true about an equation? It is always true that an equation will have an equal sign. Next question, what is always true about an expression? Please answer that for me. Expressions do not have equal signs. Okay, first we're going to work with addition and subtraction equations and what we do to make them true. When you uh, replace a variable with a value that makes the equation true, then you have solved the equation. So there is only one value that would replace a variable in an equation to make it true. So the example they're showing you is that 2 plus something, 2 plus x, equals 9. So the only thing that you could put in that situation to make that true is 2 plus 7 equals 9. And so x is equal to 9. So you have just solved that equation by figuring out that x is equal to 7. So they show you another example. It says determine if 3, 4, 5 makes the equation 7 plus, uh, excuse me, a plus 7 equals 11 true. So what they've done here is they've just plugged in each of these numbers to see which one actually is correct. So if a is replaced with 3, so instead of a plus 7, 3 plus 7, 3 plus 7 equals 10. That is not equal 11. So no, that's not the right answer. So if we do the same thing and put 4 in, 4 plus 7 does equal 11, and 11 is equal to 11, so that is the correct answer. And just to try the last one, 5 plus 7 is 12, and 12 does not equal 11, so that one is not true. The only answer that A could be is A is equal to 4. Okay, so now it's asking you to solve G minus 7 equals 3 mentally. So you ask yourself, if I have a number and I take away 7 from it, and the answer is 3, what was that original number? So what number minus 7 equals 3? Now you can also work backwards. So if this is subtraction, you could think, okay, 3 plus 7 equals what number? And that number is 10. So 10 minus 7 equals 3. That's correct. So the solution would be 10. Now on the third example, they're talking about guessing and checking. Uh, different numbers to see which one might be correct. So if the total cost of skates and knee pads is $63 and you know that the skates cost $45, use guess, check, and revise strategy to solve the equation. 45 plus something that we don't know, so k is equal to 63, find k. So this person tried 14 first and 45 plus k, 45 plus 14 is 63 dollar, excuse me, 45 plus 14 is $59. 45 plus 14 is 
59 does not equal 63. So, okay, it must be something larger. So they tried 16 and said 45 plus 16, and they end up getting 61. That does not equal 63. So now they've tried 18, and 45 plus 18 does equal 63. So this is the answer. Okay, so now we're going to try out uh, what we just saw examples of. Uh, for letter A, it says determine if 4, 5, or 6 make the equation C plus 8 equals 13 true. So if C is unknown, we don't, we don't know. We're, let's have a blank area here. S something plus 8 equals equal to 13. So if we try 4 first, I want you to go ahead and tell me what that answer would be. Okay, so now we're going to plug in the number 5. So uh, I'm going to show you all the three answers in, all together in just a moment. But if we put the number 5 in here, I want you to go ahead and tell me what is the sum of 5 plus 8. Okay, finally, let's try 6. So C plus 8. Instead of C, we write 6. 6 plus 8. Tell me what that answer is. Okay, so the question is asking us to determine if 4, 5, or 6 makes the equation C plus 8 equals 13 true. This 5 plus 8 is the only one that's going to be equal to 13, and so the answer for A is C is equal to 5. All right, so um, for B, it says solve 9 minus X equals 2 mentally. Okay, in this case, X is a variable. It's an unknown number. So 9 minus something that we don't know right now is equal to 2. So ask yourself, what would we subtract from the number 9 to equal the number 2? And you can also think backwards and count up on your fingers if you'd like. If you start out with two fingers, how many more fingers would you have to uh, add in order to get to the number 9? Go ahead and answer that for me, please. Of course, the answer is 7. 9 minus 7 equals 2, so x is equal to 7. Now for our final practice, it says, uh, for this section anyway, the difference between an ostrich's speed and a chicken's speed is 31 miles per hour. An ostrich can run at a speed of 40 miles per hour. Use mental math to guess, check, and revise to solve the equation 40 minus C equals 31 finds C um, the speed of the chicken. Okay, so if we have 40 miles, which is how fast an ostrich can run, minus chicken, which we don't know, but we do know the difference is 31. So at this time, I want you to guess, check, and revise 40 minus what number equals 31. Go ahead and answer that for me, please. Okay, so if we just go ahead and guess, okay, let's say the chicken's 10 miles an hour. 40 minus 10 is 30. So that's too much. So we're just going to take away one mile an hour from the chicken and we guess nine. 40 minus nine is 31 and that is the correct answer. So chickens can run nine miles an hour. So we're going to do the same thing now. We're going to determine the values that make multiplication and division equations true. Multiplication and division equations can be solved mentally in a similar way to addition and subtraction equations. Example number four. If the number 3, 4, and 5 uh, determines, excuse me, if the number 3, 4, and 5 makes the equation 18 is equal to 6z true. And 6z means 6 times z. z is an unknown number. Okay, so you'll notice here that they tried 3 first. So if we replace the z with the number 3, so 18 equals 6 times 3, 6 times 3 is 18, so 18 equals 18. If we try the other two, 18 is equal to 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24, not equal to 18. 5, uh, 18 equals 6 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30, that definitely not equal to 18. So you can see how that works. So you just plug the number in where the variable is and see which one makes the equation true. And again, equations only have one actual answer. So the only one number will actually work. So solve 16 divided by S equals 8 mentally. 16 divided by S is equal to 8. So we are going to think, okay, what number, if I'm doing the opposite here, what number times 8 is equal to 16? They came up with the number 2. 16 divided by 2 equals 8, and this basically is just whether or not you know your basic facts. So 8 is equal to 8, so the solution is 2. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and try 2 together. 
Determine if 2, 3, or 4 makes the equation 4 times n equals 16 true. Okay, so I've written out each possible equation. 4 times n equals 16. 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4. So I want you to tell me which one would actually be correct. 2, 3, or 4 as the correct factor to put in and in, in place of the n. Go ahead and share that with me now. Okay, of course the answer is 4 because 4 times 4 does equal 16, so that would make that true. And let's go ahead and do one more final example. We have uh, solve negative 24 divided by w equals negative 8 mentally. Okay, so we have negative 24 divided by something. And I'm just going to put a box in place of the w is equal to negative 8. Now one thing I have to remember is if I were to divide a negative number by a negative number I get a positive answer. So whatever goes in here has to be positive. So negative 24 divided by what positive number equals negative 8? Go ahead and solve that for me please. Okay, so that has got to be the positive number 3 because negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. So I want you to answer this final question. Uh, what do you think is the most important thing to remember about today's lesson?